Hello everyone and welcome to Not EC EC's YouTube channel. I'm EC, aka Jeremy, and I'm joined today by Sean from the Lore Hunter and Vader Van Oden from the Dark Insight Podcast. Hey fellas, how you Hello. doing? Hello. Good, thank Hello. you. Good. Before we get into the Dark Souls 3 discussion, which is I'm sure is what everybody wants to hear, uh, Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Lore Hunter and what you do over there? Okay, uh, yeah, I uh, run a blog called uh, The Lore Hunter, which basically uh, collects... Uh, Bloodborne lore content that the community generates, and I do a little bit of uh, lore writing of my own. I do videos, articles, and all that. It's basically a place to archive the community content, and um, I'm planning on doing the same with Dark Souls 3, so look out for that. Nice. Very nice. And Vader, Van Oden, I've been on your podcast, Dark Insight, once. Yep. Um, That's right. Metal Gear Solid, and I express no interest in it whatsoever, I think. 150 hours later into Martin Luther Gear Solid 5, here we are. Yep, we got you friends. hooked. We got you hooked. <laughs> you got me hooked. Um, <laughs> but why don't you tell the people at home what, the, what Dark Insight is all about? Um, yeah, well, we uh, Dark Insight is just a gaming podcast um, inspired um, with my co-hosts. We came together through Bloodborne and the love of Dark Souls. Um, myself, I'm a, a long-time Souls fan, um, whereas Death Note, my co-host, he came to the series through Bloodborne and has found an addiction uh, through that that channel and so we just talk we talk souls we always end up talking about souls but we try and branch out and last week we actually did a three hour podcast about Metal Gear Solid 5 with Paddy Stardust from the Twin Humanities as a guest oh, nice. um, so we try and we try and share it around with different games we have a wide variety of games we all like um, and yeah and also uh, run a, a little small YouTube channel that's mostly uh um, co-oping games with my five-year-old son uh, we play a lot of lego games and disney games <laughs> um, and yeah we just share share our enjoyment of games together and yeah share it with the world um, for and, a few and i have to say watching you and odin um, which is your son i believe yes uh, my son's name play odin. video games together is absolutely adorable it is yeah. delightful <laughs> That sounds um, good. Definitely go check like out the the YouTube channel. Like they both have matching hats, and it's, it's <laughs> yeah, just do. absolutely adorable. Like my, my, my wa I've shown my wife the channel before. It's like and she's like, oh my god, that's so cute. So, well, we need more uh, people like you to to join on and comment so we can chat back. Odin loves it when we get messages from people. Like I tell them about, it, he gets all excited and and wants to talk to them. And yeah, it's pretty cool. That's how I feel like when I when I get comments on my YouTube channel. So I know exactly. <laughs> how that is. Um, so Dark Souls three, let, let's let's jump right into it. Um, yeah. The first thing I wanted to talk about, I guess, were kind of the, the first impressions. Um, Sean, like when you, pretty much everybody has seen the footage now, and um, I'm actually going to be putting some of my footage that I've recorded that didn't go in the other two Dark Souls videos over this audio, so people are watching Dark Souls three right now, but. What, what were kind of your thoughts when you're going into it and like when you first loaded a character and kind of stepped into the world so to speak oh yeah well i mean you know you open you open that gate and you uh you just see the uh cityscape out in the distance and um you know it, it did remind me slightly of bloodborne because i know that'll be something that comes up a little bit uh, but it's only because you know it's the same like Yarnum cityscape in front of you so you know and then the engine and the lighting looks similar so my initial vibe was bloodborne but as soon as i started whacking guys it was pretty much all dark souls one from on out so mm -hmm. invader what'd you think uh, well yeah i was, I was quite in um that intro song um for the the opening dark souls 3 it was quite impressive it had quite an atmosphere to it um when i first downloaded the the beta i i loaded up straight away even though it wasn't available to play <laughs> and sat there like and I actually recorded a bit of it just it was it's it's quite it's quite different than the previous ones i think it's, it seems to be the biggest change and it, yeah that kind of sets the tone for the game it was it was quite um quite special that that opening soundtrack uh but then getting that's into a, the game um, that's a really good point the the music the menu music is actually dramatically different than any yeah. of the previous games like it's much more aggressive and much more bombastic than yeah you know, the kind of the casual not casual let's not say that youtube commenter stop right there not casual <laughs> um but it's a little bit more of the laid back tones that like dark souls one and two had yeah because yeah, they were quite um very melody and kind of uh, low like quite calm and and peaceful whereas this year does have a bit of drama behind it and yeah i kind of mm -hmm. like that 
Um, um, what character classes did you pick at first? Because there were four available. Um, I th- I started with the uh, the wandering knight, but I only got a little bit in before it crashed. So I was mostly playing with the uh, academy assassin the first session. Nice. Excellent. Um, I did something similar, but I went with the Northern Warrior, the Viking-looking dude. I got a side oh, yeah. Odin. I tend to <laughs> lean towards <laughs> Viking-inspired <laughs> things. Um, but same thing crashed, and then I went to the Assassin. Um, but all in all, I played all four, except for the I played all with all four. The least I played with was the cleric. Yep, same here. It's interesting that both of you had crashes because throughout. And I only paid, played two of the three days that the network test was open, but I didn't have a single problem over the six hours I played. Like, no crashes, no... I didn't. Re- I, I had one glitch where I got stuck on some geometry, and that was the only... That was the extent of my problems with the beta, as yeah. far as like, actual... All, like, I have to start over something. Yeah, all in all, the beta was quite smooth. Um, it seemed to work a lot smoother than the Dark Souls 2 beta last uh, year or two ago. Um... Yeah, so I was quite impressed with it. it. That crash happened probably about 10, 15 minutes into the first day. Mm-hmm. I don't know, yeah. Sean, I don't know when yours happened. Um, but that's uh, right. Yeah, mine was pretty quickly in, but I, I actually over... I played like two and a half of the days, and uh, I think I had about four crashes, and one was just the start, just... I was just running forward, and it crashed. But um, a couple of the other ones were actually when I was trying to invade, I would crash on invasion, so... You know, hmm. I think just a glitch of the network test, that's what it's there for, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's important to note that, I mean, the way I approach all of these network tests and betas and everything, like, I very much so try not to judge it as a final product at all. Like, no, I mean, definitely not. Any of the stuff that's in there, um, especially some of the more controversial stuff we'll get into later, just, you just don't know if that's going to be in the final game, and I don't think you should really get mad at anything about it. Um, Agreed. Which but, a lot of people did. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. The, the, re- the response on Twitter and everything has been very interesting. Um, yeah, I'm a Magic user uh, in all the Dark Souls games. I started with I think I don't think my first character was a Magic user in Dark Souls One, but my the character that I beat the first time I beat the game with was a Sorcerer user. So I went straight to the um, Academy Assassin, and I had a really good time with that. I really dug. I liked everything about that. <laughs> yeah, it was. I, I liked the spells. I like. I liked the soul great sword. I loved how fast everything was. It was really neat. Yeah, I liked. I, I liked how the spear worked uh, with him. Actually, I think it was a. I've never found spears that useful or viable as a weapon. I tend to not bother with spears in the other Souls games. Whereas this spear, I actually kind of liked. It, so it was quick enough, and it, yeah, no, I really liked how it worked. Yeah, the yeah, no, sword no. art, the, the charge would look just like the Grand Lance from Dark Souls yeah. 2, and it was really yeah. useful, it was really cool. Uh, see, I was a fan of that, and uh, what do you think about the magic coming back to MP-based, or like a, a bar rather than usage? I, I really dig it. Um, going back back and forth between the Cleric and the Sorcerer, um, like the Cleric had lightning spears, and they hit way harder than any other magic that was in the oh, network yeah, test. They did, um, but you can only use you know you, they took up about a quarter of your bar, so you can only cast about four times, and then you had to go back to your Ash Estus, or as I saw in a recent Vade video, Ashtis, which I guess is what the community's calling it, yeah. <laughs> um, to, to be able to, <laughs> to be able to use them again. So I, I, I kind of dug it. I thought it was a good balance. Like I thought I think that's a really good way to do it, other than getting multiple copies of the spells or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty successful. I I, I didn't play Demon Souls, so um, I I knew that it was mana based, and I was worried about that at first when I initially jumped in because I'm one of those people who really you know anytime there's a limited resource, I kind of freeze up and I don't want to use it. But with the Ash and the fact that um, it seems that Ash will replenish at a bonfire kind of takes away that hurdle for me. Yep. What, Absolutely. What, what did you think of the um, the number of Ash and Estus flasks that you got? I don't know if you've noticed with the, the different different characters that were available, they had different uh, quantities. Yeah, I thought that was very weird. Um, like I said, I played ma- majority of the Academy Assassin, and so um, in fact, me and Sean were talking over the uh, PSN party chat through a lot of the times we were playing together, and uh, he kept saying stuff like, "I have ten Estus, or I only have seven F- Estus left." And I'm like, "Only? I think I started with three. How are you getting so many?" <laughs> I thought that was a real interesting choice to make that a character thing. So I don't, 
I'm, I'm, I'd be very curious how they're going to tie that the number of essences you get excuse me SS flash you get into a gameplay mechanic because See, I wonder if it was stat based now like if you yeah, are, that'd be, yeah, that'd, yeah that'd be super interesting if it was stat based if you push because it seemed like the the cleric and the, the ma magic user they had higher ash flasks but less healing flasks yep. and so maybe vitality or a stat like that increases your estus flasks and intelligence or uh, and shoot attunement where the other different stats have been um, will increase your ash flask oh, yeah. that'd be really neat yeah. Yeah, so you'd get a it'll bigger be... bar and you'd get the ability to refill it more yeah. yeah it'll be weird to see how that plays out too because um, it, you know at least from what I was using like you know the mana bar it's not just magic it's also the the battle skills yes. so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious to see how that dynamic plays out because in that case, it seems like a stat that everybody would want to level to a certain extent. Yes. It, it would kind of reduce, or it would mean you'd have to spread your stats further. Because usually, like, if you do a strength build, you just kind of do vitality, hit points, and strength, and that's it. <laughs> but it, you, you, if you want to use your um, sword arts, you kind of need to then start investing elsewhere. So it kind of gives, it gives you a bit of a, um, a trade-off stat, which could be kind of cool. I wonder if... Um much like the agility stat in Dark Souls 2 could be raised from attunement or from um, that other stat whose name I forgot. Um, they keep changing it. <laughs> they do change it. I can't remember the, the other stat that raised agility. Oh, well, no, no big deal. But there were two stats that raised agility. And so far, so if you were a sorcerer and you were, you, know, you were leveling attunement, you could have a higher agility than someone. So I wonder if they'll do something similar here where... You can raise your strength or your dex, and that'll add to your MP bar or for your battle skill bar. But you won't have the ability to cast any spells because you won't have the magic or the intelligence. Oh yeah, interesting. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because that's where uh, Dark Souls Two played with a little bit more, didn't they? They had the yep. leveling stats, but then they had the actual stats of the character, and they there were more yeah. of those mm -hmm. than there were so, that you could level. We, we jumped off into mechanics real quick because Sorry. I think all three of us are real heavy <laughs> into the Souls games, but um, I want to roll it back real quick and get your your opinion. Um, Sean, you mentioned this earlier, kind of those, they kind of look Bloodborne-ish, and I've heard that a lot of people, but man, does this game look just fucking great or what? Wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> what did you guys think about the graphics, just from a pure like graphics war mentality? It was good. I, I, I liked it. Um... I, I've always oh, yeah. liked the Souls guy. Like, they've always done quite well, especially the character model, like the main character that you're playing as. I've always liked the armor and the detail. This is just kind of taking it to another level, the, just the detail and the environment. Um, I was saying the other day to someone um, I've, that uh, Souls games, there's always supposed to be this element, especially Demon Souls, there's this element that, that's sort of a lived-in area, but it's never felt like that. Whereas I found Bloodborne worked with that and it's felt more lived-in. And this what this Dark Souls 3 beta what we've played so far looked more lived in more decayed and more mm. yeah it's more filth and more yeah just things have been going on other than just you as a player turning up to just going a kind of a, a playground I don't know if that made sense <laughs> oh no yeah I, I, I agree I think it um cause yeah I think I think the graphics look great and it, one of the uh, comments I think I made during the stream was that I, I'm playing through Dark Souls 1 again right now for my uh Dark Souls 3 blog, I'm sort of doing a lore overview, but, so I'm playing Dark Souls 1 right now, and it was, it's it's kind of an exaggerated comparison, but when I saw the hollows in Dark Souls 3 and I went back to Dark Souls 1, it almost felt like the first time in games when you saw things go from two dimensions to three, just because there's so much more detail, and I'm like, are these, these are the same guys, but they look just so much better, you know, yep. so... And there's more variety in those those hollows as well. Like there's a few different different versions of them in this already, and I kind of like that. It seems, it makes a bit more a bit more character into what you're facing, rather yep. than just the same model over and over again. Yeah, and um, a comment as far as the the lived in feeling is, uh, I I agree, and I I know that there's there's some people who sort of um, don't like the what they call clutter of the design that it's a little cluttered, little filled. And um, I, I was watching a stream again today just to take a look because I didn't really have that problem with Bloodborne. And I, I feel like if you didn't like the clutter in Bloodborne, you still might have a little bit of problem with the amount of objects in the environment in Dark Souls 3. But I think they definitely toned it down a little. Like, I think Dar like Bloodborne in Central Yarnum with all the caskets, <laughs> I can understand. But Dark Souls 3, I felt like it was always 
toward a purpose or it was meant to be evocative. And, you know, maybe that was true for Bloodborne, but I think if someone had an issue with that, they would find this a little more palatable. I, th- I think also the the world of Dark Souls is so much so dramatically different than the world of Bloodborne, just from a setting perspective. That Bloodborne it suffered from a, some some samey environments, especially in the beginning of the game when you're going from cityscape to cityscape to cityscape. Dark Souls being in much more of a fantasy oriented world, like a, hopefully we'll see so much more of a variety in in areas. So. That, that next-gen clutter, which is what I've always heard it referred to, like, hopefully that will be used to great effect in an area like Lost as Azalith, excuse me, Lost Azalith, or um, Blight Town, or, you know, the forest in, from Dark Souls 1, where they're just dramatically different from what you have seen before. So, I, I, while I agree that some of it was there, I, I kind of, I'm not really that worried about it. Like, I thought it all looked great, so... <clears throat> You know, talking about the hollows and uh, just how much better that they looked than Dark Souls one or two, and how much better animated they are, and how much more of a variety they are, even in this like sliver of the game, I really enjoy it when Dark Souls puts non-aggressive um, enemies anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I really like that, and they were all over this level. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Thanks, anywhere you couldn't make three steps without finding like a dude worshiping a. A weird dead tree or a weird dead dragon somewhere did you notice those trees though they were actually they were hollows as well i know yeah like hollow weird dead hollow trees like what the hell is going on in this game and no, hollow, yeah. exact, exactly <laughs> um what I, it made me think of um i think it's the japanese torture where they um back in world war Two, they'd plant bamboo <laughs> under people have you heard about that yeah 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 this what made me think of <laughs> Makes like skin grow. So they, that sounds horrible. Yeah, and so they, <laughs> but then they actually look like the part of the tree as well. So either the tree's grown through them and they've become a part of it, mm. but at the same time, the other hollows, some of them were worshiping or kind of praying or kind of towards these other trees that were hollows as well. So it was very strange. I don't know how they got how that's going to tie in, but it, it was quite intriguing. You know, this no, brings no. us into one of the more interesting set pieces in the entire network test. Yes. And, uh, I think I was I think I was on the on the mic with Sean and he heard me like squeal like a girl when this started happening on my screen. <laughs> um, about midway through the network test, um, you're out on a set of rooftops and you encounter yet again a group of worshiping hollows that are worshiping these tree things. And you kind of, by this point, um, you realize, hey, I don't have to attack these, so I, and I can't spend the souls that I'm getting anyway, so I'm probably just gonna walk by these guys and oh hey, there's an item over there, I'll go get the item. And um, on your way to get the item, one of them literally explodes into some gelatinous black monster that I'm not going to even try to explain or to describe, because <laughs> I'm going to show it on the video and then we're going to put this audio on top of. <laughs> um, but that was probably like the most holy shit, what the fuck moment in the game in the network test for me. If I had to describe it, I'd combine it with the the fire dog, the watchdog in the chalice dungeons. Com- combined with the centipede from Dark Souls One. Hmm, okay, <laughs> that's how. Not, not a bad comparison. <laughs> you can mash those two together the way they gnash around and flip around and jump and yeah. have funny limbs. That's sort of yeah. what it is. <laughs> and I mean, it definitely had an abyss feel to it. So I mean, when I yes, I didn't. Yeah. I've been pretty dark on Dark Souls Three. Like I haven't been following stuff, so I had no clue that was coming. So when that popped up. You know, it's, it's like it's like Jeremy said, just the biggest like "what the fuck is going on" moment, and yeah, really took me off guard. Well, it, yeah, it gave me a fright because it makes quite a loud noise, and if you're not looking at it, <laughs> the noise in it was enough to kind of go, "What the heck's going on?" Uh, but it, it's that sense of you're going to kind of get a sense of ease, like yeah, as you said, Jeremy, around the these hollows, you're like, ah, they're not a threat, and then <laughs> well, wait a minute, uh, and it hits hard. I don't know, did you guys kill it or did you die to it? Yeah, I did both. <laughs> okay, you did I both. never I never died to it. The first time I encountered it I just it, ta- started tossing fire bombs and it was pretty weak to fire. It's very weak yeah. to fire. And magic yeah. as well. Uh, it's very yeah. very weak to magic. And um, then uh, once you kill it it didn't respawn, no, so and yeah. I I kinda stayed with that first character for a while, so I didn't fight it until much later on and then yeah, just I kinda knew what was coming. Yep. So because I think the first time I encountered was actually I was helping someone else. I was in as a white phantom, and it, it, I think it almost instantly killed one of the other phantoms with us. 
like they just died oh, like geez. in seconds because yeah. they, they obviously weren't expecting it and they were right next to it and it just kind of bit its head, hit the <laughs> head off um, <laughs> and then it hit me and it did a lot of, it, was, it hit very hard um, but yeah easy to stay back and just throw fire bombs yeah yeah but yeah that, that thing is just yeah it's you are saying like you get used to the um the hollows just being passive and that's that's not the only time they really punish you for that because they have those screaming guys holding the lanterns and if you if you don't hit that guy immediately like they really punish you in this game for like just skipping by the passive enemies <laughs> yep you get you find yourself caught in a horde rather than just taking one on one you get surrounded quite easily well and that's something that's um they started doing a little bit with dark souls too that you can really tell they're kind of you know leaning on that next gen power they put a lot more enemies on the screen at once even if some of them are not aggressive um hardly any enemy encounter is just with one dude it's usually yeah. with one or two dudes with a bunch of guys that they can call in at any time yeah and uh i've really and i really really enjoyed that you don't quite have the mobility of bloodborne um which i think makes them makes the encounters a lot more tense like you still have to kind of with Bloodborne, it seemed like you could just very quickly dash, you know, three or four times and be away from them. But with Dark Souls 3, that even though you're, you're moving still pretty quickly, and I think faster than any Dark Souls game before, you can, it's, it's, it's not as easy to get away from those guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, did, I, I don't know about you guys, but me, um, I think because Bloodborne is the most recent Souls game I've played, I haven't really played any others since then. Um, I was play, trying to play like Bloodborne and I was finding it really hard. I had to kind of unlearn Bloodborne to be able to actually mm -hmm. get into the into the beta properly. Like I just found it quite difficult because yeah, it's it's quick and it looks like has the look of Bloodborne, but it's it actually more, is more strategic and you have to be a bit more patient like traditional souls like Dark Souls 1. You can't be as gung-ho as you in Bloodborne and that that's threw me to start off with. But once I kind of realized that's how it f played it was quite easy to jump drop back into the I guess sword and board kind of or take your time fighting style that Dark Souls kind of established. I, I agree with that. I, I, I played Bloodborne before jumping into this. I spent a few hours in Dark Souls 1, but I just spent the last 80 hours of my video game playing getting the platinum for Bloodborne using yeah. um, Ludwig's Holy Blade, and then I jump into this and I'm using the Great Sword once <laughs> I got it, and it was really tough for the first hour for me to just the move set was different and in Bloodborne it's all about getting the first hit. Yep. In this game it's 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 not about getting the first hit. It's like you said it's about assessing the situation and waiting for the moment just like Souls games. So they might have the speed of Bloodborne a little bit more, but it definitely re re relies on your knowledge of Dark Souls instead. And the combat animation feels much more Dark Souls, and I know this. I know we keep going back to like comparison to Bloodborne. I think that's because that's a that's the most recent Souls game. It's on next gen platform. Like that's that's kind of the thing that we're going to compare it to. But and I think everybody's worried that um, hey, Bloodborne didn't quite scratch that Dark Souls itch, and now Dark Souls Three looks more like Bloodborne. Like this is going to be a terrible game. I'm not going to buy it. And um, but it, it doesn't. It's not that at all. Like the combat, no, it, it feels deliberate in a way that I don't think that Bloodborne quite captured that Dark Souls is kind of known for. Um, for better or for worse. I know some people like that, some people don't. I I didn't have any trouble with the controls. I um, I, I kind of just jumped right back in and it I think the first thing I put on Twitter during the network test was like, this feels like Dark Souls 1. Like this, it felt faster, but I mean it felt like Dark Souls 1. It was like a return to form. Yep. Uh, and I, I was just over the moon. I had such a blast with the combat. And the, the speed of the combat is kind of interesting because, very obviously, like they had no access to equipment menus, to inventory, to anything, and you just picked up stuff and you were just adding it to your you know on hand stuff. There was no equipment load configured at all. Like so, at one point I was wearing heavy armor, I was carrying four weapons, I had a shield, a torch, <laughs> and a bunch of items, and I'm still fast rolling. Like there's no way in the end in the end game, yeah, exactly, in, in the final game that that's going to happen. <laughs> Well, yeah, in all the characters, all the no matter what class you went, could could wield the great sword. Um, yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. I, I did notice that some characters could get could squeeze more damage out of some of the weapons, um, which I would assume oh, is just because of scaling. Um, like I, I used the great sword with the uh, academy assassin, and he wasn't doing as much damage with it as the 
who's the axe guy? Was the axe guy the northern the nor warrior? Yeah, the northern yeah. warrior. Yeah. Um, so, and I would imagine the northern warrior would have more of a strength, more yeah. strength than the, the assassin does. So that would make sense. So the scaling seems like it's still in there, even if it's at an early stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as as far as the uh, equip loading goes, you know, I think that's all network test stuff. So the comments I saw about that, I think, were a little bit, um, pre, you know, I think it's a little soon to make those judgments. But one thing I do think might be true of this game that it's not really toward Bloodborne or really any of the other ones per se, but I think there is more of an emphasis on flexibility that will crop up. And, you know, I say that because you're using different weapons and stuff, but if also my biggest thing was the, the, the pine resin didn't last very long, but you oh, got yes. more of it. So it sort of encouraged me to actually use pine resin. Whereas I would almost always end the game in dark souls, you know, with a whole full inventory cause I was too afraid to use it. So I think you never wanted to run out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So did either one of you see the, um, um, I believe it was, uh, P Peverson on his YouTube channel. Um, he was able to parry an opponent in PvP, apply the resin, and then get the repost. <laughs> I did no, I didn't see that. that. No, that's I'll um I'll I'll put a link in the YouTube description, but I'll I'll link to both of you okay. after, after the show, after this. Um, that's good. But yeah, that's that's a really cool idea because it because you could you're right it, it doesn't last long, but you could apply it so fast you could apply mm -hmm. it like mid combo in some cases, especially using those like scimitars. Yeah. You could, you know, R1, R1, apply, and then hit him with an R2 with the lightning buff applied, which is super cool. It might change combat substantially. Yeah, you especially combine that with the sword arts, then you've got a lot more variety in your combos, and, yeah, you can be a lot more deadly, uh, potentially. Yeah. It's yeah, very cool. Yeah let's, yeah, let's talk about sword arts for a minute, because we touched on them as we were talking about magic. Um, I used the great sword almost entirely throughout that i had to I had to force myself to use different weapons um what weapons did you guys find yourself using the majority of the time uh, I, I played a, all of them to be honest i just kind of flicked between them i was just trying to play okay. and test everything mm -hmm. yeah i mean i used i used a lot of the great sword also but um i had some fun with the axe and the spear as well i i um i didn't really use the mace a whole lot but going to the the sword arts is I also didn't really understand what the mace sword art did, so it kind of was less interesting to me as a result. But so the sword arts are applied by um, as you're holding the weapon, hitting the R2 um, button on your controller, and in the great sword's case, it puts you in a different stance. In the short sword's case, it seems to put you in a different stance. The axe seemed to give you some sort of attack buff from just looking at the icon. That's the only thing I could come up with, and it seemed like I would do more damage. But it, mm -hmm. just like the r resin, it didn't seem to last very long. Um, and then the, as we mentioned earlier, the spear has like a, a, a long charge, which you could hit enemies multiple times, which was very very cool. The, the axe also, uh, when you're in that buff state with the glowing, because it kind of had like a red cloud around your hand, almost like fire, but not quite. Um, that you'd also change your attack pattern with the X. Oh, would it really? I, I must. I did not know that. Yeah, normally yeah, the two hand. The R two was normally like a da just a down smash. When you had it, it was an uppercut. When you had the it buffed. Oh, and it was, see, it's a real fast uppercut, like a little slash up. You're making me wish I could just boot this game up right now. <laughs> yeah, run some more. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be six months before we're able to do that, unfortunately. Uh, um, and talking about the two weapons that go into a different stance, I really thought it was cool, um, specifically with the great sword. Like, you go into a stance and you can either R1 or R2 your way out of it, and then you could charge either one of those, it seemed like, or maybe you can only charge the R2. So you have just so many more options of, like, when you want an attack to go out, um, you know, where you want it to go out. And after the test was over, I was talking to some some people, and they said that um, they were experimenting with rolling the charge d while during doing the charged R twos. Oh, nice! Um, so, yeah, that's crazy. yeah, I mean, it, so people are already like, I mean, in the nine hours that we had access to the game, people are already coming up with crazy, crazy maneuvers. Um, yeah. Did you guys see anything besides like, to, to me, the great sword? Um, I said R2 to get your sword arts earlier. I meant L2 to get, yep. and then R2 was the attack. Sorry about that. But um, my, my favorite attack out of the whole game was the great sword upswing that knocks people away in the air. Like, that was just the best feeling in the world, hitting that on players. Did you guys, like, come up... Did you guys find something like that besides the great sword? 
Um, I, I really liked the, 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 the long sword, just the straight normal long sword. I found that the easiest to play with in general, so I'd probably spend more time with that. Um, and I didn't really use the sword arts for it that much, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked the great sword swing, but um, I also like that if you hit if you hit L two close enough to an enemy, it'll stun them for a second. So against like the uh, the Balder knights, like you, that could sometimes be your opening to get behind them if you wanted to. So it was pretty flexible, and that was true of the axe as well. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I did use that the axe because it has like a little kind of roar, kind of yeah. like the bloodborne roar, it stuns yeah. enemies just briefly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I did use that. You're right. Hmm. What what I did notice with the great sword though, I did, uh, it was really useful against those bolder knights because they they were they're quite they're quite a lot more clever. They're quite they're quite tough at times. Well. Um, and the, the easiest way I found to beat them was to chuck on the great sword and just get them with the uh, the normal side swipe. And I really liked how they an they actually animated to take the hit and they would actually get smashed to each side. Um, and that's never really happened in a Souls game. They've only, there's no real animation in the hits. It's, all, or it's always the same kind of stagger. Whereas this actually followed the path of the sword that you're hitting them with. And I, mm. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Oh, I also, I also noticed with that, the, the charge attacks. You could do a normal attack and then do a charge attack and it would start from the position that you, your sword was at the end of your first attack. So you could do a charge attack from your left or your right, and I thought that was a cool touch uh, yeah. as well. Overall, the the animation of, on the, your character model and all the weapons and things seemed so far and away above Dark Souls Two that I I was just I was over the moon. Like that's <laughs> I was never a huge fan of, and this is not going to become like a Dark Souls Two bashing thing, but I was never a big fan of the way that. Um, your character seemed to swing weapons, especially heavy weapons in Dark Souls 2. They kind of felt like they were too light. Um, yeah. And that all of the weapons here seemed like, in, Dark, in the Dark Souls 3 network test, seemed like they had a lot of weight and heft to them. And like you were saying, Vader, if you hit something with it, like you kind of felt and saw them, like the feedback loop was there where they would you would hit them in a direction. <laughs> it just felt really good. Yeah, I don't think I've um, ever seen that as such because they've kind of got the smash down that's always been there in the Souls games, but not animated to so actually stagger to one side. And then mm -hmm. you could then get the second hit, smash them the other way, and it felt like you kind of slapped them across the face a little bit. It was awesome. Um, so another big difference that... Um, got me very excited is that they no longer have a shield bash um, in Dark, like they have in Dark Souls 2 but they went back to the Dark Souls 1 kick uh, which is good but also the kick now does what the shield bash did so if you kick an enemy uh, and this worked very well against the Balder Knights if you kick an enemy they kind of and their shield is up you know they go into that animation and then you can get the repost off of them on them immediately oh, I didn't really know that. really set yeah. real satisfying it was super good mm -hmm. I missed yeah, that. I made big use of that you yeah, know I, I really liked that that was that was good and I also liked I also liked the fact that they changed it so that um running r2s are the same as a jump attack which made it really easy to pull those off obviously so I was doing jump attacks all over the place so <laughs> Yeah, I like the axe jump attack. It's always my favorite. Um, well, let's talk about multiplayer a little bit, because ostensibly this is a multiplayer network test. This wasn't just for us to sit around for nine hours and <laughs> geek out about. Um, <laughs> what did, you, did you guys get a whole lot of multiplayer stuff in? Were you able to summon? Were you able to invade? Sean, why don't you go first? Uh, I, I, was, I was more successful at um, being summoned than invading or... Um, you know, or summoning people into my own game. I had a lot of um, unable to summons, and then the invasions, like I said, it caused me to crash a few times, so sometimes I'd reach a critical point where I didn't want to do it just in case the game crashed, and then I'd have to start fresh. But, uh, yeah, I, I had fun with both of them. I, the, you know, the big thing that people are getting at for invasions is I never invaded a world and had less than two people on me, so I died pretty fast. But <laughs> I, it, was, it was still fun for me. I, I don't know. But in the summoning was fun, although obviously once you get three guys in the boss, you know, it makes it kind of a cakewalk, but I still enjoyed it for what it was, and I like the flexibility that it gives players to progress in the game, so. Vader, what about you? Yeah, very similar to me. Um, found it hard to summon others, but I think that's not necessarily 
um, a problem with the, the game or the network. I think it was more that there were, I don't know, thousands of people in a very small space all fighting yeah. over the same summon signs. Um, so as soon as one goes down, it's been picked up. And so, um, but I did get people in to help me out. And I did notice that there was a, I, th I think it's similar to Dark Souls 2, there was a time because I would have phantoms just disappearing and saying they've gone home. I don't know if you guys noticed that or know anything about it. I, I didn't do anything in my own games. I was talking to someone, um, one of my Dark Souls buddies, um, and I was asking him because he said he had uh, chased a host because a host tried to disappear and tried to hide. And um, So he said he just hung out in the, the host world and like watched YouTube videos <laughs> waiting for the guy to show up. And uh, this is kind of near and dear to my heart because in Dark Souls 2 they did implement that 10 minute rule so you cannot, you can't be in the host world for longer than 10 minutes which really screwed up my whole line of Fat Tarkus videos which are, where I would stay in some other world for like you know 45 minutes at a time um, so I, I don't know I don't know I saw people disappear and drop out I don't know if that was a, some sort of hidden timer or if that was just the network connection being weird or you know people just dropping out of the game or, or what have you I, I think it was yeah it seemed like it was actually meant to happen because we come up and say they've returned home and it's it happened I saw it happen with both red and white phantoms mm. um, okay because I, I did have a lot of fun when I would invade um, and it was it would end up on a 4v2 situation so it would be me and another red oh, versus yes. um, three white phantoms and of course the host and it, very quickly like you get one red kind of distracting the white phantoms and then the other guy you kind of switch off back and forth and trying to kill the host because of course if you kill the host you kill you win that's all you're there for and that was that was a good kind of chaos that reminded me of like the free for all battles and the dark souls one or pvp arena which i don't think hardly anybody ever played but i quite enjoyed and wish they would go back to um just like a crazy huge battle of six people all at the same time it's just really fun it was pretty mental i did i did come across quite a bit of honor jewels um mm -hmm. Which I was quite surprised with, to be honest. Um, it was a bit of a mix. It was kind of just a free for alls, and then also people trying to to fight one on one. So I had a host and the, the the starting bonfire. I think it was there, and there, yeah, because they they went in and waited up on top of the stairs when you come down. And they and I fought the phantom. I was the red phantom, and they were, I fought the white phantom and won. And then the host came and fought me. Uh, Very nice, classic. <laughs> Classic Did you guys uh, see any of those um, torch parties? I I, I came in, I, inv <laughs> I invaded a, a torch party and they, uh, that was me. I saw the video. <laughs> it, it was pretty good. I mean, but as soon as I put my torch up, they stabbed me. So it wasn't. They weren't. They weren't fully doing the torch thing, but it was still pretty funny to see. Yeah, I that saw one of the videos, great. the time lapse video one, where it was like a lot sped up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was mental. <laughs> I love the fact that um, like the game is we're negative like we're negative six months to release right like we have six months left and we already have like dumb Dark Souls three D <laughs> videos going like that that makes me unbelievably happy. Yeah. Um, but but all in all, I think the the online worked uh, yeah quite smoothly. Um, mm -hmm. Sean, were you a part of the? Did you were you in Dark Souls two beta? I, I wasn't. I uh, that that one I missed, and I I just watched the Bloodborne one. So I heard about the Dark Souls two issues, but yeah, it just didn't work. I remember playing it for like yeah several hours, and never once saw anyone online. Um, I enjoyed playing the game; that was fine. But um, yeah, there was no one online. I just you couldn't connect. So this was an improvement already, um, and I avoided the Bloodborne one because I didn't want. I wanted to go in completely dark. The only reason I got into this beta was for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seemed more successful than the Bloodborne one too. At least from the videos I saw, it seemed like they're well. Bloodborne's whole network thing's kind of messed up, anyways, in my opinion. So, you know, this this just worked. So there there wasn't really much to comment on as far as like you said. There's just a lot of people summoning, so it's kind of hard to get in there. But and you know, and then I had a couple crashes. But really, out of like the eight hour, seven and a half, eight hours I played it. You know, it just it worked as if I was just playing the game, so Yeah, nice. So we we've been chatting for about forty five minutes and I, I don't want this to run too long because we're gonna <laughs> exhaust the average YouTuber viewer <laughs> patients probably already forty four minutes past that actually now that I'm thinking about it. Um, <laughs> But I, I do want to talk about um, the two bosses that were in the network test, one that's hidden, and then obviously at the end of boss. Um, had either of you watched the videos from E3 or from TGS that had showed off the, the Dancer of the Frigid Valley, which is the 
um, end boss in this network test. Have you seen her at all? I've no. seen images, but never actually, no actual real footage. Yeah, same. I was, I had seen videos of people fighting her. I'd never seen anybody win. Um, but man, that, the, the intro cutscene, great as always. Dark Souls always does great boss cutscenes. I'm always into that. But, um, the animation that they've used to make her move around this, the boss arena is just the weirdest thing I've seen. <laughs> oh, it's, it's hypnotic. She's it's really strange hip, to watch. She's hard to read. It, it's very like almost reptilian, but it's also got like a weird puppet thing, like someone's controlling her like a marionette. And I, yeah. I just don't, I did not know what to think about it. I got a bit of an Amelia feel from her, from Bloodborne. Hmm. Yeah, in the one re- in the one reborn from the opening animation, I'm I want to look go back and look, but I'm I swear the uh, falling out of the thing in the sky is almost the exact same. Like even the way the dancer fell out is almost like shot for shot the same as the one reborn in my mind at least. So I can see the definitely see the similarities there, um, yeah. and I did, were either of you able to beat her solo? I only tried once, and I got her to a, oh, I got her really close. I only went in with half my Estus, so I got her to her about, um, I think it was about maybe fifteen percent health left, and then yeah, she I, just I, she comboed me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it solo. I only got it with, um, a, with uh, one of the few times I was able to get the summons in. But yeah, same. I got pretty close solo, but the the. The test was like, I was really literally running up against the edge of the test, and I think that just psyched me out, and I, I lost, so. I have a, um, if I, if I can find the footage, I'll make sure I put it right here as we're talking, but um, by the end of the second night, like, the, the sign flashed on the screen saying, like, the test is about to end, and I was in the middle of the fight, and <laughs> I, I got her down, I mean, like... I, like a sliver like it had to be like two hp <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe three hp and then um she did the the twirly thing and uh, uh, like <laughs> she, you know she twirls four or five times and yeah it's what got huge me huge sweeping motions and if you're not careful like you can just find yourself caught up and she can just combo you to death um, yep. yeah yeah I mean, what a boss fight like it was it was fairly simple but from a, from a technical perspective from a combat perspective but just the presentation like the fact that her flame sword would slowly catch the pillars in the room uh. on fire, and the fire looked so cool. Like the fire is straight out of Bloodborne, which is a good mm. thing to me. Like that's good. It was just so so awesome. Yeah, it was quite spectacular. I did find I don't know if it's what it is, but I did find the spacing harder to read in in this than some of the other Souls games. I don't know if there's something slight change, but I did find the spacing between me and the, the boss was quite hard to read, and so I, sometimes I think I should hit, but it wouldn't. But yeah, she didn't have much to her. She's quite thin, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah, and with, with the weird movement, I, I think I had a bunch of whiffs as well. Um, and I, I'm not, yeah, I can't figure out if it's the movement or she sort of leaves these like weird trails of where she's going. So it's, yeah, everything about it sort of, I can agree that there's, I think it's the animation and just, which might be intentional, that she's sort of hard to place in space because there's like this blur and she's all like slow-mo walking so yeah it's weird because it's like a slow-mo but also very quick at times as well so it's kind <laughs> of a weird kind of mix yeah as you yeah. Uh, one of you said hypnotic um and the music yeah. is quite hypnotic as well in its own right music like like ascends into this crescendo like it's like it gets just like the main menu music it gets bombastic like it gets mm-hmm. just like driving almost like it's it's presentation a plus like I, I enjoyed the heck out of that boss fight it starts quite slow though, doesn't it the music is quite mellow melodramatic kind of and then picks up and the then it, it builds up yeah absolutely and, and that's mm-hmm. kind of probably helps with the tension of the game <laughs> 
Yeah. I also like, and um, this was something that I noticed about all of the enemies for a long time with Dark Souls. The, the big strategy is to get behind it and stab it in the butt, whether it's an enemy or whether it's a bigger enemy or whether it's a boss fight. And um, the same was true here, but like the Balder Knights we mentioned, they have a really neat and very very quick sh- over the shoulder shield bash mm-hmm. that you know if you try to go for the backstab, they'll pop you in the in the face with that and you know combo you and then. The boss seemed to have a lot of moves where she circles around. It kind of seemed to prevent you to, from trying to get behind her. So I, I think that the designers are watching people play this game and going, yeah, we don't want you to do it. That's too easy. <laughs> We're going to have to build some stuff to prevent you from doing that. Yeah, the AI, AI is a bit more, a bit more clever. Um, yeah, she would do like a little twirl spin and, and would get face you again. And with a sword swipe, they kind of prevent you from spinning mm-hmm. too long behind her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I like. I think. I think the presentation is stronger than the fight itself. But I did like those little those little touches that you know you show that the games are still progressing and they sort of they know they know what we do and they're still working on ways to mix things up. So. Yeah, keep us tested and and keep trying <laughs> and learning. And then the hidden boss, um, and I say it's hidden, you find a key somewhere, you only find one locked door, like it's, it's not really <laughs> hidden, <laughs> but um, underneath the second bonfire, you can find a locked door, you unlock it, you go down an elevator, and there's this weird, I guess ice creature is the way to describe it. Um, Sean, I know you found it, but Vader, were you able to, to, to find it and, and kill the beast uh yes i did find the icing because you say it's, it wasn't quite a boss because there was no health bar was it It was kind of just like uh a mini boss i, I guess it was a yeah it was a I, it, I keep saying boss only because it was a unique enemy that was very obviously stronger than the rest of them but i guess it would be like the the boar and the undead berg where it's not an enemy it's, pr- it's probably going to be an enemy that you'll find five of later in the game that you'll have to fight <laughs> so, <laughs> but it wasn't a named boss and it didn't have its own health bar yeah. or music or anything like that it was just kind of off by itself in this creepy little dead room i think um, I'd, i actually had people summoned with me at that point and so i did um it wasn't too bad i think i was the magic user at the time and just kind of shot magic and fought it i don't really didn't really don't think it even hit, even hit me um i did find oh, interesting wow. there was there was the ice um build up bar which was interesting i don't know if you guys noticed that or were hit by that mm-hmm. yeah, oh yeah I, yeah the when you, i got the frost bitten on the on, like across the screen and everything so yeah which is like a stamina penalty, which in that fight is a pretty big deal because that Ice Knight is kind of like a weird, like, the way I, I sort of processed in my brain was like Blood Starved Beast meets Artorius as far as like just the movement and sort of the look is like a weird shambling Artorius Blood Starved Beast combo. It really felt like something that should be walking on two legs, like yeah. crawling around on four, um, which I which think is, is a, it's yeah. really interesting. Very creepy. Yeah, um, I guess I didn't really experience it to its fullest. It kind of just ended. Um, I didn't really see much of it. It just seemed to be kind of hunched over turtle kind of like thing. That oh, I can't remember what the weapon it had. Did it have a spear or a sword? It didn't really have it. Like it was just kind of clawing at you. Like I don't think it had a weapon at all, and it would it would blow like ice breath or something. <laughs> yes. I'm making it sound like a Mega Man villain or something, <laughs> but uh, like it would it would have like an ice attack. And then um, it, when Sean says Artorius, I kind of agree because it had a lot of flipping and like and jumping towards you attacks, um, yeah. and especially and it would combo into those multiple times. So if it hits you on the first one, you were pretty much almost guaranteed that uh, so. I didn't see any of that <laughs> it was kind yeah, of no, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's a big difference of. if you're like with a party or by yourself because I um I actually I was having trouble with him and then I, I summoned someone in and it was a cakewalk and then I was able to solo it later on but yeah there's a huge there's a huge difference so when he's coming at you just directing all the attacks like uh, like Jeremy said, it just keeps jumping at you, and it really that's why it definitely has kind of a bloodborne feel because I almost felt like I didn't have enough time to recover. You know, I needed to move very quickly, so yeah, definitely just mixes it up. Because yeah, with talking about that, bloodborne stamina is quite generous. Like your movement doesn't use much stamina, 
Dark Souls is very, very. It penalises you for rolling too much. Like stamina is very uh, is a very scarce resource. Where did you feel feel this one sat? I I felt like it was better than Dark Souls 2. I've I've bounced back and forth between um, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, and Bloodborne a lot over the last few months, and um, I feel I find myself running out of stamina like so quick in Dark Souls 2. Um, mm-hmm. And the other other day I was I had to turn on my 360 for the first time in like a year um so i I loaded up dark souls one on that to just kind of take a look at it and man you move slow in dark souls yeah and you don't you don't have the stamina so this definitely felt like everything was faster it it felt more like demon souls uh yeah that's what i heard yeah yeah like just the the ability to run faster for longer like just definitely felt felt like demon souls to me yeah the stamina seemed to be a bit more generous it was still a, a scarce resource but not in a really penalizing way um, they seem to recover quite quick as well, uh, so you could get back into the action quickly without having to wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. Well, I, th- I think that's going to wrap us up, guys. Um, I guess at the end, do we, do we have any, Sean, do you have any like general thoughts on the Dark Souls 3 network test you'd like to put out into the world? Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I really liked it, and um, obviously I do the Lore Hunter stuff, so that was kind of beyond the just the combat my big thing and what i liked about this network test was that while like for instance the bloodborne one gave very heavy atmosphere and it really had this like one sort of concept that followed through this one was like a series of like like uh teases like there's the ice knight there was the big abyss spawn thing there was the dragon breathing fire so it just had these really cool um, areas that felt like there'd be a lot of good environmental storytelling. And with the dragons and the worshippers, it was just very um, encouraging to just see these really evocative images and to have no clue what they're about and to just be looking forward to seeing what's in the future. I think it conveyed... I think they intended it to be sort of a microcosm, and I think that was pretty successful. Agreed. Good points. Vader, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, well, when I first uh, heard Dark Souls 3 announced, I, I kind of wasn't... I'm a huge Souls fan, but I was kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'm ready for another one. But then seeing footage and now being able to play it, I'm way into the hype train. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've booked a whole carriage on the hype train. Um, and Are both of you going to... Uh, are you both going to be like jumping into trailers and footage as soon as it comes out now? I think I still might avoid that, especially getting closer to it, because... Yeah, um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. yeah. I think I'm gonna remain dark as far as that goes, just because I, I I followed the Bloodborne thing really hard, so then I watched all the trailers and analyzed them. As you can see on my blog, the pre-release stuff I did was ridiculous, but uh, I just I want a little bit more mystery. You know, even small clips in a trailer will reveal things that I just want to be surprises still. So yeah, I think I spoiled Dark Souls too a little bit for me. I still really like the game. But I kind of just knew too much. I took some of the wonder away. And the surprise in the Souls games is half the fun. When you just get surprised by something that leaps around the corner or or something like that. Yeah, I want the surprise still there for Dark Souls 3. Though, that said, we haven't mentioned the Lord Vessel. Oh yeah, oh yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first thing you see basically upon entering the game. So. And what's more intriguing is the the poker. The bonfire poker sitting next, sitting next yeah. to you. Next to it. Yeah, yeah there's, just, there's there's yeah. so many evocative images in it. Like the, the in one part, and we didn't even I didn't even talk about the minute we didn't even talk about the executioner guy. There's so much to talk about just yeah. in this small compressed space. But mm-hmm. all of the hollow armor that's just everywhere that you can knock over, like, it, and all of, and then the four gravestones you can find that you could offer a flame to that would yeah. have the weird lore bits. Yeah. I mean, just like there's some there's some real interesting stuff here, and I can say out loud right now that I'm going to do my best to avoid Dark Souls 3 media and just know that I'm lying through my teeth the next trailer <laughs> is coming out I'm going to be all over it like I'm just I'm not going to be able to help myself uh, it's tough once you get going mm-hmm, it really is um, for, for myself I, I really I'm really glad I got the opportunity to play it um, I, I I was worried to kind of like what Vader alluded to like you know this is Namco Bandai saying hey we need another Souls game because mm-hmm. you know this is a triple A game now and we got a bunch of marketing to do so we gotta we gotta get this out the door, um, but it really feels like they're they're just in this small little area that they gave us. Like it feels like there's a lot of care being put into it. So I'm I'm 
I was never really off the hype train, but now I am. I am. I am the conductor of the hype train now. So <laughs> I, I am all in. Um, I'm excited. We only have six months left, right? <laughs> know, Jesus Christ. Uh, at least there's Bloodborne DLC, right? That's next month. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm so keen for that. Should be good. Yeah. Well, Sean, Vader, thank you guys very much for talking to me. I, um, I really appreciate you coming on. I, I, I watch both both of you guys on the internet. Like I, I, you know, I read the stuff that you put out, or I listen to it in Vader's case, or and I watch. You know, I try to keep up with it. Sean, you and I talk quite a bit on the Duck Feed Slack because we're both huge fans and mm-hmm. sometimes guests on Bond Fireside Chat. Um, yep. Uh, Vader, can, one more time, can you tell people where they can find you on the internet? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, at Vader Van Oden on Twitter or Vader Van Oden on YouTube. Uh, I'm just there doing my thing. Excellent. Sean? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, at the Lore Hunter on Twitter, and uh, my blogs, I guess, now are uh, uh, thelorehunter.blogspot.com. And for Dark Souls 3, I chose an SEO route, and it's Dark Souls 3 lore.blogspot.com. So you can check that stuff out for the Dark Souls 3 one. I'm just, uh, it's six months away, but it's actually quite a short period of time when you're trying to play through Dark Souls 1 and 2 again and <laughs> make posts about the lore. So. And Bloodborne DLC. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> um, and as always, if, you, if you're at this on, if you're listening to this right now, you're at my YouTube channel, not ECEC. I'm JG Greer on Twitter. If you want to come follow me there, where I pretty much do nothing but talk about souls. And if you're interested in seeing some of the worst examples of vile language possible, you can hit me up at darksoulshaters.tumblr.com, uh, my Dark Souls hate mail blog. And once again, Vader, Sean, or AKA the lore, the, the lore Hunter, thank you very much for being on. No yeah, worries. thanks for having me. And thank you all out there for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. See you later. See you.